pass for Nash on the right wing to the circle. He shoots and a save by Bishop. Miller drops it off. Bouchard shoots. Oh, oh what a save. What a stop by Bishop. Now it comes in front and Miller scores. J.T. Miller. 3-1 Rangers after an incredible save by Bishop. It's the first career postseason goal for Miller. And the Rangers lead by two. Welcome back, everybody. WHIP Radio time in the studio right now is 3.30. That was Kenny Albert from the MSG Radio Network calling JT Miller's goal in Game 6. One of seven goals for the Rangers in Game 6 to force a Game 7. We not only have one Game 7, we have two Game 7s in the National Hockey League. It all gets started on Friday night. I'll be at the world's most famous arena for Rangers and Tampa Bay. Winner will go to the Stanley Cup Final. And then on the west side on Saturday night in Anaheim, you'll have the Ducks going up against the Blackhawks. But let's go out to the hotline right now and go to a man that works with Kenny Albert as he is the color analyst for New York Rangers hockey on your MSG radio network via 98.7 ESPN New York. And that is former Rangers captain Dave Maloney. Dave, it's Zach Gelb here, WHIP Radio. Thanks for a few minutes and how are you? I'm doing great. I just can't wait for the puck to drop as we have to wait a few days after that really exuberant Game 6 victory for the Rangers as they did find a way to get two early goals and then in the third period, uh, momentum really did shift to the Rangers. But I did happen to see something online preparing for the interview for the show today and it was a link posted by my friend Mark Rosamond and it was an appearance of you on David Letterman back in the day and Letterman obviously just retired a few days ago. So what do you remember from that appearance on the Late Show. Well, I remember uh, it was quite, quite fun, quite interesting. I actually sat with David uh, in his office before we went on. He actually put pads on, and I um, shot at him down at Rockstone Center. So we had uh, a little interview in the, in the studio prior to going down down the ice level. And I remember uh, Otis Blackwell was a guest on the show, and he had written a couple of songs that Elvis uh, would end up recorded or had recorded. So Paul Schaefer and his band were rehearsing playing a number of the Elvis Elvis Presley songs. So that's not I mean, I'm a little later than that, but much not much later than Elvis in his heyday. So it was quite an event. It was quite fun. Um Marv Albert, the great Ken Albert's father, um, kinda of coordinated that uh, that I ended up on the show. So it was it was quite exciting, quite fun and, and another um you know, it's in, indicative of what can happen when you're around this city. Uh, one thing can lead to another, and there I was on David Letterman. So you were shooting on Dave Letterman. I would have to imagine that was the easiest goal you ever faced in your career, right, Dave? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had to help him fix his mask a little bit. Unbeknownst to me at the time, I was only going to look at the video after, he had his pads on the wrong way. So <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had not had much experience uh, in goal, and it was... Uh, it was quite fun, though. I was impressed. He was a, a, a consummate professional and certainly uh, went to going to greater things from there, that's for sure. Awesome stuff as we're talking to the former Rangers captain, Dave Maloney, now the color analyst voice of your New York Rangers on your MSG radio network, all heard on 98.7 ESPN New York. The Rangers, once again, they come up big in an elimination game with their back up against the wall. This group, over the last four years, they really find a way to win these Game 6s and this Game 7, and we'll see if they could do that tomorrow night. But what makes this group so cool, calm, and collective in these elimination games, Dave? Uh, largely remain the same, but I don't think it's any surprise that uh, the franchise numbers in elimination games have been established with Henry Conquist and goal. And once again, there's no better example of uh, Game 6 in Tampa. Well, the Rangers got off to a 2 nothing lead, but it was uh, became 2-1 late in the first Callahan's power play goal. And, you know, he makes a tremendous save on Stamkos on uh, Tampa power play in the first. He makes uh, a save on Brian Boyle, who's come out of the box uh, after serving a penalty, a late guy in, and he makes a left pad save there. He makes a save on J.T. Brown coming in off the left side on another late uh, penalty kill situation for Tampa. He makes a stick save on uh, Tyler Johnson. Uh, that really just, in a lot of places, uh, ways defy any sort of explanation. 
is how he gets it done because to his own admittance and uh, the observations that those of us around his team have of him, he is the same guy first day of training camp that he was game six um, against Tampa in elimination. He prepares, he competes, and uh, you can say what you like. I know Broussard has a big night. Nash has a big night, J.T. Miller has a big night, but they don't get the chance to have a big night without the guy at goal. He's been tremendous. And he just really weathered that storm in that second period because Tampa was just getting shot after shot. I know the Rangers did have a big third period. So I agree with you, and you saw a similar thing in Game 4. But what makes Tampa so good? You look at that game, if you just look at the box score, it says 7-3. And if you didn't watch, you would think, oh, the Rangers blew him out. But we did talk about that second period. Tampa just keeps on coming at you, whether it's with the triplets lines or with Stamkos. Callahan had a very good Game 6, his best game of the series. So in this game, seven. You know emotions are going to be high. How do the Rangers, who have a very good defense, slow down this Tampa Bay prolific offense? Well, the Rangers like any team will get in trouble if you're turning the puck over. And This game, both teams want to play with speed. And I think from a Rangers standpoint, they've been around the block, as we documented here earlier in this conversation, a number of times in situations like this. So it requires a little patience, believe it or not. I think this uh, Rangers team, despite the well-acknowledged again that both teams want to play with speed, I think you have to be patient, and I think you have to be smart. The Rangers, uh, in a lot of ways this series, well, in most ways this series, what happened in one game hasn't determined the outcome of the next game. So it's anybody's guess as to what, how this thing will play out, but I think if the Rangers are, are, are smart patients with their speed, uh, they have a better chance. You cannot be uh, so over to defend and be chasing the puck uh, because uh, Tampa's skill sets fall right into a team that if you've got open ice, they're going to find it. So I think, um, you know, maybe it is the experience. Uh, maybe it is just that uh, ability to kind of take a deep breath and, and, and play not, not slow, but patient. And I think that's what the Rangers need to do once again in Game 7. Any series really in the playoffs that you have with Henrik Lundqvist and that, you know the Rangers have an advantage. And Bishop on the other end was not good in Game 6, and he had a really good Game 5 with that shutout 2 nothing win on the road. What kind of Bishop do you expect tomorrow night at MSG? Well, I, I, I'm not. He, did, he is throwing. His last four starts have gone 5 against, 5 against, none against, 5 against. Uh, and I'm not sure where Game 5 came from. Uh, a, from the Rangers' inability to get to the net to make any... I think they had eight scoring chances the whole game. Now, credit, um, Tampa played about as perfect a road game as any team was going to play, and I don't think anybody thought that was in Tampa's bag of tricks. So I'm not sure that um, even the shutout that Bishop has been, who many people hope particularly from Tampa standpoint, hope that he will be. Um, that remains to be seen. Uh, so, but in a one-game situation, um, anything can happen. A goal can get hot. I do think it's important that the Rangers make him move and really advance the puck as quickly as he can after making him move. Uh, so I'm not sure he's shown the technical expertise it needs to be in a goaltender's game to take a team to the next step level. But that being said, it's a one-game deal, and we all know that many games, many games have turned on a one-game goaltender uh, event uh, to, to, to an advantage one way or the other. I think you're exactly right. I think the biggest key for the Rangers in this Game 7 is really just to send those guys to the net because I haven't been that impressed with Bishop either and his lateral movement isn't great. So I just have to imagine you want to see your guys like uh, Kreider or Nash just really use their big presence and get in front of that net and crash. Well, yeah, I'm not sure you ever get a chance to establish base position against front, and I think it's just, you know, you can throw J.T. Miller in the mix, Carl Hagelin in the mix, Kevin Hayes in the mix. Uh, there are a number of, of and, and actually the, the Rangers force here that's centered by Dominic Moore has been a very effective group also. So, um, you know, you hear opposition suggest that they want to get Pucks and Bodies to Lundquist. So, 
Uh, but it is imperative that you, you make a move and, and, and force him to have some sort of um, obstacle in front of us. A few more questions with Dave Maloney, the color analyst for the New York Rangers on MSG Radio Networks, all via 98.7 ESPN New York. I'm Zach Gelb, right here on WHIP Radio. So you have that Game 7, which is going to come your way tomorrow night at MSG. Uh, For the Rangers and Tampa, you take a look at both these teams. If you had to predict the ideal style that they're going to want to play, because this series has been all over the place, what style do you expect the Rangers to play in Game 7, and what style do you expect out of Tampa Bay if you had to put in an ideal world for both Elaine Vigneault and head coach John Cooper? I, I think both teams want to play with speed and skill, and both teams want to not to turn the puck over. The Rangers got in trouble in game six in the second period by turning the puck over. Now, I'm not sure that wasn't the result of the pressure they felt and the speed they felt from Tampa. Uh, I think both teams need to be good. The, the Rangers, particularly, are much better if they're, they're good with puck in their own end. I think uh, if, if they're executing in their own end, and execution in their own end is not, it's, it's defending to offend. It's defending to make a play against the fight. I think Tampa, uh, particularly aggressive off their back end. I think they're particularly aggressive at the offensive blue line with their defensemen pinching down. Um, it's a little more of a five-man active kind of pursuit from Tampa, and I, I think the Razors, if they're good in their own end, if they're if they're the puck is moving cape to cape, um, and their quickness uh, you know enhances that uh, puck movement, then I think they're they're on top of their game. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, although there hasn't been anything in this series that one can conclude what is exactly going to happen in this game seven. It's been a really special run the last four years for the Rangers. Three Eastern Conference final trips, uh, one trip to the Stanley Cup final last year, but all under two different head coaches, obviously in John Tortorella and Elaine Vigneault. If you had to pinpoint the biggest difference between Torts to Elaine Vigneault that got the Rangers through that Stanley to the Stanley Cup final, what would that difference be? Because I don't think if you, if you ask me, when Elaine Vigneault was named the head coach of the Rangers, I liked the hiring, but I could have never predicted that the Rangers would have possibly been going to back-to-back Stanley Cup Finals if they're able to win tomorrow night? Well, we talk an awful lot about their, their propensity for success in elimination games, and I, I don't think you can discount uh, John Tortorella's influence on this group, uh, the core of this group, who were forced to compete uh, under any circumstance. So I, I, I do think there are still traces of Tortorella that can be uh, attributed to, to the success of Vino and his group. That being said, um, Vino's style, uh, John Tortorello uh, basically shot blocked and tipped the puck out and defend and hope your goalie makes the save. Um, the, the, that could only take the range of teams so far. And uh, Vino's style, which is more defend, to get the puck and go make a play up ice, uh, has taken this range of uh, group to the next level. So I think uh, the building blocks were well established, and I, I really don't think you can discount the importance of Tortorella when it comes to the must-win situations where you have to find a way. That was John Tortorella's style. That being said, it needed to be taken to the next level skill-wise, and that's where Vino is coming to play. The second difference, uh, in, in Vino's system, you are going to play regardless of a mistake. Uh, that wasn't so much the case uh, with John Tortorella. There's a little less tension with uh, Vigneault. So I think it's been a nice combination of uh, a guy who expected and demanded a certain way that ultimately pays off when you're back to the wall, but you've got to be able to execute with skill to get to the next level. And I think that's where Vigneault comes in. Final one with Dave Maloney, who joins us right now. You were a leader for the Rangers back in the day, obviously serving as their captain. If you're Ryan McDonough, what would be your message before you guys take the ice for an imperative Game 7 with the possible trip on the line to get to the Stanley Cup Final? There's really, at this point, there's no, there's no message needed to be verbalized. There, there isn't uh, a guy in that room but that, you know, the newer guys, Hayes and Miller and Fost, have seen this in the last series where they had to come from, um, you know, down 3-2 on the road and then come back and win. So at this point with this group, there's very little that had to be said other than 
just to encourage everyone to go out, um, be who they know they can be, and have some fun with it. All right, Dave, we appreciate the time today. We'll see you on the bridge tomorrow night. Thanks so much. Should be a great okay, scene man. tomorrow at okay, MSG. Man. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks.